Uh, today we are going to discuss about the uh, customer experiences and how they affect the overall uh, purchase experience or service experience. I have my colleagues uh, Srijit and uh, Sai with me. I just wanted to start with the uh, uh, experience I had today um, with um, a school. Uh, it's a school where my children study and um, I went there today to uh, collect their uh, uniforms. Obviously, uh, the school management is not responsible for uh, stitching the uniforms. They have um, subcontracted it to some third party and that third party has set up a small shop there and uh, they are uh, giving away the uniforms uh, to children, uh, I mean parents. So we were on a queue, there were around 10-12 people uh, before me. So I thought uh, even if we assume 2-3 minutes uh, per person, I am going to uh, be waiting here for around 40-45 uh, minutes kind of thing and I got ready. But um, by the time I went to the counter and then I got my uh, kids uh, uniforms, it was uh, 2 hours. So for uh, 12 to 15 people, they took 2 hours and when I went closer and closer, I could see why. Uh, first of all, there was only one person who was the point of contact and uh, he was the person who was talking to the parents, he was the person who was asking for the kids names, he was the person who was searching in the files and then he tells the people inside the name or the register number or whatever it is then they search and then find the product and give it to him and he is the one who is preparing the bill and he is the one who is collecting the money also. Uh, as a result, even though they had 7-8 people standing in that room, that one person became a bottleneck and he took 10-15 minutes for every parent and he had to wait and he refused to do any parallel processing or anything. As a result, everybody there were very upset and then they were shouting like, the school is always like that and uh, all sorts of things. Uh, and I noticed something very curious. Number one, uh, everybody knew that this guy is a third party. Everybody knew that school is not stitching uniforms. Somebody else are stitching uniforms. So they were not uh, really um, trying to accuse the school for that. But because this particular experience was bad, they were finding fault at even the smallest mistakes that the school does otherwise. Probably the school bus comes late. Probably uh, the school uh, starts at an odd hour or whatever it is. Some sort of uh, mistakes that they may be doing. They were pulling all those things today and then they were all uh, arguing like uh, the school is bad and stuff like that. So that was uh, something very interesting because when you interact with a customer, there are multiple touch points and even if one of the touch points goes bad, it gives the impression to the customer as if the other touch points are not good. So they start with the um, mindset that uh, everything is bad about uh, this uh, particular customer, sorry, this particular firm. And then they look at even the smallest mistakes as uh, a large uh, error. On the other hand, let's say all touch points um, are good or average, even average, forget good. If all touch points are average, we are happy. If all touch points are good, probably that's the ideal case. If one touch point goes bad, so that's when we start treating that entire experience as bad. So it has a huge impact on the um, overall satisfaction I have as a customer. So that's the experience I had and I just wanted to throw it uh, as a, a thought and then hear your views. Naga, uh, this is actually uh, pretty much in almost and I think in uh, every part of our daily life, we actually come across this kind of an experience which uh, we go through it's it can be either like your example of where you had an experience in a school but if you look at it actually you know just right from the morning you know when you go to a restaurant the way of the actually you know the hotel serves you the food the way they treat you the way you're greeted the way the food is served to you you know through every face that you actually every part of your day you know it, you actually feel this customer experience but at a different scale like when you come into office you, you want to feel welcome your receptionist welcomes you and she says hello or a good morning or somebody even says hello the experience that you feel you feel positive about going forward so basically this customer experience management is more towards the approach that a person has to whoever it, it can be so I can be from a customer perspective but that person can be from a supplier perspective also right so that is more of it it, it has to happen as a two-way kind of a relationship right that's an interesting thing because uh, one more thing I noticed from your experience is that it can overlap for example if I had a bad experience in the restaurant probably the next interaction I'm going to have with let's say a bus driver that's is true. going to be probably rude because I had a bad experience somewhere else 
obviously the driver didn't do anything to me but because i am in that mindset then i am uh, reacting uh, in a really negative manner to the driver so for no mistake probably in his case even the first touch points hasn't started actually That's google true. calls it uh, a zeroth moment of truth so when you are researching about a product even before you start researching you have some mindset okay this product is like that so that's a interesting thought now the, i mean what what do you think is the solution is being average is the solution being average will not be the solution actually because uh, you have to be little proactive towards your customers because when you tend to be average you always tend to slip down in terms of your customer yeah it's it's risky when you're average yes. even a even a slip can really cause exactly. a, so it's always better to always beat the actual benchmark and you always stay on top so that even if you slip you don't slip below the average yeah. and it's always better to retain yourself right on the top right so the best the best effort you put in towards keeping your customer happy any point of time it's it's always on the safer side when you come down to an average you tend to slip down further right so very, very good point actually uh, what i feel is also you have to consciously uh, monitor this um, uh, customer uh, journey yeah. uh, for example uh, let's say you are in a store and in, you are in a counter if you only worry about the staff who are coming near you and then talking to you then that's only uh, in a big journey probably there are 10 steps and you are only worried about one step that you are there so if somebody else who is before you in the journey if they make a mistake you are impact you are you are affected even though you do your job well so somebody has to consciously look at the overall journey okay a customer walks in so what's the experience they are getting here what's the experience they are getting in step 2 step 3 step 4 step 5 till the end so uh, uh, businesses should first start looking at what is a customer journey itself that itself they have to track and then in each touch point in each step of the journey then they have to look at okay who are all the players that is right then what they are doing that where is the weakest link what we can do to improve it in this case the school case i gave the weakest link was the guy who was in the uh, who was acting as the point of contact. contact probably if they split the roles like okay fine one guy will welcome the parents one guy will do the billing one guy will do the looking for the students name some sort of some instead of seven eight people inside searching for things that if two three people uh, remove that bottleneck and make it a, a better experience i think that itself would have given a totally different perspective about their service uh, just coming to your point you you actually this topic is going regarding kids and it's talking about restaurants so i'm just actually uh, trying to point out a brand mcdonald's okay okay so let me just explain uh, what actually happened to them at one point of time where there was a lot of controversy with the kind of uh, food you know they were using a lot of ingredients which were not good and a lot of them rated mcdonald's as a junk junk food as they categorized that food as junk food so what mcdonald's actually did was their primary target was kids so what they did was they tried to start attracting kids with toys but that was not sufficient so from burgers they started moving to salads they started moving to organic juices organic teas so what has happened is today mcdonald's just to you know come out of that concept that they are no more junk food they've come out with so many things just to give the customer experience that it's just not about junk food that you come here for and because parents have a concern that when they take their kids to mcdonald's the kid is going to land up being an obese child so now when they go there they obviously have a lot of options to throw it right additionally on the menu they have the list of calories that is mentioned so this is basically you know the customer is aware of what he's eating right. so he can't point a finger and say hey you know what i put my son has put on weight or my daughter has put on weight so you obviously know what you're eating so you you enhance your customer experience with the kind of you know information you throw you being very honest about what you're doing right. so the customer very well knows that tomorrow whatever happens is it's it's me to look for right so that's right. yeah another uh, related example is uh, a case study from subway um, i heard that uh, subway uh, learned that there was uh, one guy who went on a Uh, subway diet that kind of thing so he will only eat subway uh, certain uh, items from subway okay. menu and then he reduced uh, so many uh, pounds yeah. so what they did is they took this uh, business case and then they made it as advertisement campaign even today you can see it in some subway stores saying that i lost uh, so much of weight uh, by going on a subway diet it may be true it may not be true that's the different story but it has happened to somebody so they just took that uh, as an opportunity and then they made it now when you walk inside not only subway or mcdonald's any fast food uh, yeah. uh, supposed to be fast food restaurant when you walk in so you see that uh, things like healthy ingredients being used fresh ingredients being used mm-hmm. calories and uh, all all that information that's right and uh, they are trying to uh, as you said they are trying to say 
uh, they are trying trying to stay uh, transparent. They say, hey, this is what we are. Now you take the you call. Take the call. What it is. Yes. Uh, in fact, sometimes they go out of their way to make sure that the customer experience is really good. Another example is this uh, subway. Um, no, I heard it uh, from KFC. I think uh, what KFC does is uh, they procure um, cooking oil for vegetarian food and non-vegetarian food from two different countries. Oh, okay. Not two different places. places. Two different countries. Okay. And they use only that particular uh, cooking oil for vegetarian, that cooking oil for non-vegetarian. Non so they say very clearly, even by mistake, we cannot fry your vegetarian stuff using a uh, oil which was earlier used for cooking non-vegetarian. Non so they are very clear yeah. and they are purposefully doing it just to invite vegetarians inside their store which is more seen as a chicken shop right it, yeah. their name itself contains yeah. the word chicken. chicken so people vegetarians uh, yeah. tend not to visit their uh, store right. and then they do such things to attract that so that is a very interesting uh, um, concept overall what I feel is uh, we have to be watchful about the customer journey and we have to see in each step what is happening, observe very closely, it's like that's what these mechanical uh, companies do. When you have some problem with a particular machinery, uh, they don't really blame the machine, they don't blame the person, they watch the process. Okay, how they are taking the tool, how they are fixing the tool, what is the exact process, the video, they videotape it, then they analyze it and then finally they watch that video many times and then they decide. These are the different changes that can be done to improve it. A similar uh, monitoring is required here also and then you decide in each step what are the different things that can be done better what are the different ways in which you can enhance the overall customer experience and that's what will be the winning formula so that's what uh, i think is the takeaway from uh, this uh, chat. thank you thanks